Excellent. So our presentation for today is titled Creative Strategies to Engage and Motivate Champions. And I'm really excited about this presentation today. And it's with great pleasure that I introduce to you our presenters. So we have Lindsay Bendheren. So Lindsay is a float team's BPSO and professional practice educator at CHEO. And she's earned her bachelor's of science in nursing in 2008 and her master's of science in nursing in 2014 from the University of Ottawa. She has 15 years pediatric emergency and also pediatric intensive care experience, as well as the integrative care and delivery experience coordinator. She has over three years experience as a nurse educator on the inpatient medicine and has recently become the professional practice educator at CHEO. In collaboration with her colleagues, she's published work on the creation of an interprofessional pediatric resuscitation program for non-acute care providers. And, and it was actually named the first five code blue in 2019. And this program has been successful and is still running strong at CHEO. We also have Lorraine Van Mustren. She has been the nurse education educator at CHEO since 2019. And Lorraine has graduated from the University of Western Ontario. And she's also completed her BSCN program in 2008. And she's been working at CHEO since that time, spending the majority of her career in the area of hematology, oncology, and nephrology. She's also been involved with many change initiatives and research projects and have been leading CHEO's BPSO journey since 2019. Now as an educator for, and she's now an educator for the integrative care delivery department, she's leading the development of CHEO Center of Excellence for pediatric home and community care. And I'm so excited to welcome to you both Lindsay and Lorraine. Thank you, Thank Macy. You, So I'll introduce you to our organization. So we are at CHEO, which is the Children's Hospital of Eastern Ontario. We are located in Ottawa, Ontario, the capital, um, and we are a 167 bed tertiary pediatric hospital. We are a level one trauma center and at CHEO each year we help out more than 500,000 children in Eastern Ontario, Nunavut, Northern Ontario, and we also serve the Utua region of Quebec. CHEO is a global leader in pediatric healthcare and research, and we are dedicated to the best life for every child and youth. Um, we have in, been in our pre, BPSO pre-designation status since 2019. At CHEO, we have more than 3,200 doctors, nurses, and other specialized allied health professionals. We have over 250 researchers, 700 volunteers, and we are a teaching hospital. So we have 2,300 trainees that come through our hospital each year in medicine, nursing, and other health professions. Every year at CHEO, we have more than 6,700 admissions. We perform more than 7,700 surgeries, and our little emergency department serves more than 75,000 visits each year. And we also have over 180,000 180,000 visits to our outpatient clinics here at CHEO each year. Thanks, Lindsay. So this is the list of the five best practice guidelines that CHEO is currently implementing as part of our pre-designation for BPSO. These guidelines were chosen based on work that was already happening within our organization and also on organizational goals that follow CHEO's strategic direction. So for example, the asthma best practice guideline, CHEO has a well-established asthma program, but implementing this uh, best practice guideline and its recommendations helps us to strengthen our existing program. Also, another example is the breastfeeding guideline. So we know that a huge gap exists at CHEO with the lack of uh, lactation support for our babies and families. So this guideline was chosen because of this identified gap and the need to use best practice guidelines to help us build our program from basically scratch. We were originally aligned to start our BPSO journey with cohort six, but we had to push the start date as we went live with EPIC, which is our electronic health record. So we officially started in September of 2019. Our BPG team leads were identified and assigned to each group. Gap analysis were completed for each of the guidelines. Uh, stakeholders were being identified. 
we initiated BPG working groups and we started to build our implementation plans. Our hospital-wide supported BPSO launch was originally planned for Nurses Week 20, uh, sorry, 2020, which the WHO had dubbed as the Year of the Nurse. So we were really excited about this. Was, this was going to be a really exciting week. We wanted to celebrate our nurses at CHEO and start to build excitement for all the amazing things that we could accomplish with our BPSO work. Unfortunately, planning was halted due to the COVID-19 public health emergency that was announced early in the new year 2020. So with the declaration of the pandemic on March 11th, 2020, we were forced to adapt to a less familiar way of project implementation. Uh, so there were gathering restrictions and limitations to working on site. CheoNet, which is our internal website, was prioritized for COVID-19 information sharing. Uh, staff were experiencing email and information overload. Things were happen happening and changing so quickly. Um, staff were quickly skimming and deleting emails that they didn't that didn't seem like a priority at the time, which included a lot of our BPSO notifications. Many staff were redeployed both inside and outside of CHEO, which, as many of you know, causes a lot of stress and anxiety. Staff were exhausted and uh, were very resistant to change. So we had to adapt to staff working remotely and the requirement to meet virtually. We had to find ways to connect to our champions and to continue BPSO activities in the hospital without losing too much momentum. We had to identify creative ways to reach people and launch our BPSO work. And we had to look for new ways to engage and recruit additional champions. So we reached out to our CHEO's uh, communications team to help us make a video similar to one that was shared with us from Mofor BPSO. The response we got was, here are some tools. We have limited ability to support you on this request, which was completely understandable. You basically need to do it yourself. Uh, so we watched some tutorials, we played around with templates, and we found some dedicated time to create a BPSO launch video that we were able to share with our CHEO staff. So this is the video that we created to share with staff about CHEO's BPSO pre-designation. It was shared on CHEONet, which again is our internal website, uh, through emails, during nursing advisory council meetings, and at BPSO steering committee meetings, which were held with our management and leadership teams. And ultimately it was and has been still shared to raise awareness of BPSO and what this means uh, for us at CHEO. So we're just gonna go ahead and play the video now. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Um, so without even realizing it or before it was published, um, we actually, upon reflection and building this presentation, realized that we were actually using principles of the social movement, movement action framework, which is um, featured in the RNAO's leading change toolkit. Um, and CHEO, when we're looking at how we used the social movement action framework, we really focused on the value of change. So looking at the change and was it necessary in our institution um, and looking at the value of change as one of the preconditions um, for a social movement. The social movement action framework reflects how social movements are values driven by a desire to advance common goals. This was our key um, focus and factor in leveraging BPSO work here at CHEO along with ultimately patient safety.
An example of a social movement that um, was fueled here at CHEO by a lot of social movement group was in relation to our breastfeeding best practice guideline. Um, and so we did have some uh, pilot program with the lactation consultants run here at CHEO. And we actually had a overwhelming amount of support from the, from the community. Um, there was a mom's group on Facebook that was really, really active in creating um, advocacy and um, showing the importance of the um, breastfeeding pilot program here at CHEO. So in this case, um, the community, the staff, and the patients viewed change as valued and necessary. They created a social movement, they made a collective action plan, and they developed public visibility. Um, the breastfeeding, breast practice um, leads here at CHEO also partnered, and with some of the families as well, partnered with the Champlain Maternal Newborn Resource Program, which is the CMNRP program located here in Ottawa, to support the implementation of the best practice guideline as well. So as I had mentioned in the previous slide, we really decided to focus on the value of change here at CHEO. Um, and when you're looking at the value of change, um, you really need to consider is the, um, the change valued and is it considered credible? Does it align with your organizational priorities? Is it seen by your colleagues as a means of advancing common goals and achieving improved health comes? And is there a part of the change that is valued most and why? You also need to look at, is the change necessary? Is it needed? Is it needed now? And are there other priorities that are more timely or more pressing? Um, here at CHEO, a lot of our BPSO uh, work aligns with our organizational policies and, and also our goals, as well as our strategic direction. So currently our strategic direction here at CHEO focuses on safety first, improvements made, partners in health, faster access and wise resourcing and inspiring work workplace. Um, we have had some overlap of our BPSO work here at CHEO with our SPS work. Um, SPS stands for Solutions for Patient Safety, um, and basically it is a network of 145 hospitals across North America, um, just pediatric hospitals, that really focuses on um, basically reducing patient harm and having zero harm and improving outcomes um, for a safer hospital admission. And so a lot of our work that overlapped with um, our vascular access EPG implementation, as well as our patient and family-centered care implementation overlapped with our SPS work. Uh, an example of that work would be the um, TLC video that we're going to show you coming next. And so this, um, basically the TLC is from our vascular access beach PG, and we had a hard time um, reaching and engaging staff. And so what we really did in this case was we created a fun little TikTok video and we actually used one of our vascular access champions. Um, and they're the one that really took the lead of this in creating it um, and really to engage their colleagues as well. And so I will play this for you guys. So I hope you guys also enjoyed that video. Um, so we really at CHEO have embraced and we've adapted to using a variety of multimedia platforms to engage our um, stakeholders and also engage our champions and our staff. Um, I'm not going to read all of the quotes that are on this slide, but really um, 
what we have found um, from doing some literature research and preparing for this presentation and when we're building our videos is that it is becoming more and more common to use social media in healthcare um, for a variety of reasons, from quality improvement projects to celebrating and sharing achievements of your team, and also to engage staff um, and also create more attention towards um, whatever project you want that you're working on. Um, and so as you can see, it's proof from the literature that um, the support for social media use in healthcare education um, is supported and it's happening more often. Um, and it is said that social media, um, when used in healthcare, helps create modalities for connection among staff, improves engagement, and also shows innovation to your staff. We will note that it is important to also look at your demographic when you're um, like your staff demographic when you're making videos for your staff, um, just because you want to tailor the message towards that demographic. And at CHEO, we know, um, along with many other institutions, we've had many new nurses come into the hospital over the last few years, um, and we have found that this um, engagement strategy of making videos for that patient population has worked very well. So from creating these videos and working on some of this BPSO work, um, Lorraine and I have had to delve into the world of social media and really figure out what's the best timeline for videos, how long they should be. And so this is just some general rules that we'll share with you guys. Um, so social media has really weighed, changed the way that people communicate and engage in social movements. Um, interestingly enough, you have eight seconds or less to attract the attention of someone with social media. If you haven't caught their attention in that first eight seconds, um, then they're just gonna tune out really. Um, and some of the most popular words um, that can be used to gain engagement with social media is when you're making your message is to target the five W's. So make sure that you're addressing the who, what, when, where, and why. We also have found that it is best to keep videos around one to two minutes, and that is the optimal time to basically maintain um, viewer engagement and attention. So in 2021, we planned our first CHEO Champions Day. Uh, this event had to be held virtually due to ongoing uh, meeting and gathering restrictions at the hospital. So at the time, posters were considered litter on the walls. So we were we were strongly discouraged to not use posters to promote our event, which would have been primarily used in the past to get attention. Uh, we didn't want to distract from important COVID-19 messaging and changes. Um, so we had to think of new ways to promote the event and invite staff and stakeholders to join us. So this is a video invitation that was created to share with staff. It was delivered via emails and it was shared with the help of our nurse educator and management teams at CHEO. And as a result of sharing, we had a lot of interest in our first Champions Day and we were able to successfully attract more champions to join our um, BPG working groups. So we'll share this one with you also. The end of um, 2021, as many of you know, was a very tumultuous time for everyone, uh, but especially for those of us working in healthcare. Staff were really tired. Uh, the environment was heavy and change was not being well received, at, excuse me, at all. So we wanted to celebrate the great work that had been accomplished by our, our uh, best practice guideline teams and champions at CHEO. We decided to create another video to celebrate the work of our champions and our um, best practice guideline working groups, and also take the opportunity to share a holiday greeting with the hospital from the BPSO team. Generally, um, greeting holiday greetings were sent in emails. So we wanted to think of a, of a fun way to share, to spread a message. Uh, so this video is a great summation of the work that was completed during a global pandemic with very limited resources and staff. 
We felt this was very important to share with our CHEO colleagues to celebrate all that we were able to accomplish during such an incredibly challenging time. We'll give it a second. If it doesn't, doesn't work, we can move forward. was probably one of our favorites to put together. Um, so there are a lot of different options when it comes to tools for multimedia development and social media use. Uh, so Canva and Powtoon are the two that we have used most often for our BPSO work at CHEO and to help with champion engagement and recruitment. Uh, they are both quick to learn and are very user friendly. Um, Throughout this journey, I often have had people ask me like how I put together such fun videos. And I always remind them that I'm a farm girl and I'm also a nurse. <laughs> and if I can create a video, I think that anyone can, as long as you have some tools. Are we able to switch back to the slides? There we go. So um, these are just embedded links in the presentation, but as I mentioned, um, uh, Canva and Powtoon are both interactive tools that we have used to develop our social media uh, videos and, and also posters and um, invitations and whatnot. So as a summary, this is our collection of videos that we've created to date. We use these videos to recruit staff and becoming champions, engage others in our BPSO work at CHEO. We've used them to inform others about the BPSO work that has been completed um, and to share our accomplishments and recognize and celebrate our staff and champions. We think we strongly believe it's always important to celebrate any small or significant um, change. Videos were shared during Nurses Week, at Nursing Advisory Council meetings, uh, steering committees, at huddles, via emails, and they were placed on CheoNet where all staff could access them and view at any time. Some were shared on CHEO's Twitter account by our CNE uh, for patients and families to see and to be informed on the great work that was happening at our organization. So 
So some other engaging strategies that we've used here at CHEO to engage champions um, is we've been doing some, uh, running some competitions between units and groups to see who can get the most champions signed up or who can do the most BPSO work. So uh, we've had competitions between our nurse educator group and our nurses advisory council, also between the inpatient surgery unit nurse and the medicine nurses. We've also been offering incentives for staff who become champions. Um, so right now over the summer, um, I've been using some leftover gift cards from Nurses Week. And basically anyone who becomes a champion over the summer has a chance to have their name entered in a draw to win a gift card to various things if they become a champion by September 1st. Lorraine and I have also ensured that we maintain a visible presence here in the hospital. So over the summer, we've been going to the various units and making sure that we've been doing huddles at the units. So um, quick huddles on basically what is a B, what is BPSO, what, um, what can I do to become a champion, what work has been done by BPSO here at CHEO already. We've also found it's been important to spotlight our champions. Uh, so you can see in the poster here in the bottom corner, that's one of the posters that we made on Canva to spotlight some of our BPSO champions throughout the hospital. And we've gone to the units that the people work at, posted them up there. We've also posted them throughout the hospital on our um, RNAO board outside of the cafeteria. And we've also made sure people know who their champions are. And so the top poster that says BPSO champions, who are they? We've gone throughout the hospital, posted them everywhere so that people know who the champions are um, and who they can go to to ask questions. And we also have found through our um, use of technology that we had found it very useful to include QR codes. So as you can see, the Spotlight Champion poster has a QR code on it. And so that QR code for that poster actually links them to our internal BPSO site here at CHEO, where they can go get more resources, learn some more information, know to, um, who to contact. And we just find that having QR codes accessible for staff seems to be really helpful because it has them basically less time searching through our, in, our internal system. Um, and that just basically gets them the information that they they want now. Um, here is a summation of our current successes for 2022 at the moment. Um, at the moment, we at CHEO have 11% of our nursing staff um, designated as uh, champions. We are currently trying to meet that target of 15 for our deliverable to become um, a designated status. We have recently posted two permanent part-time positions for 0.6 lactation consultants at CHEO. We recently launched comfort care um, phase two in our emergency department this past July, and that will be moving out throughout the rest of the hospital in the coming months. We've created and launched a PIV pamphlet for families and put posters throughout the hospital with accessible QR codes so families can um, access information on how to care for their child with a peripheral IV and it encompasses the um, concepts of the TLC for IV safety. We've implemented daily line necessity review for PIVs into EPIC, our EPIC charting system and as well as our roundings on with the medical teams and nurses. We've implemented non-pharmacological pain intervention documentation into EPIC. We've also created a care coordination note in, Ep in EPIC to capture care preferences and specifics as requested by patients and families. So when we did move over to EPIC, we did realize that we lost the ability to capture the correct place to um, write specifics on a child and their care. So for some of our complex care patients or even for any child, um, certain things like what is the kid's favorite toy or their favorite color or how they prefer their medication potentially crushed and put in applesauce, we didn't have a good place to capture some of that information in Epic. And so we've created this care coordination note that is going to capture all of that information. And just having small little details like that really helps the nurses build better relationships with their patients and families um, and basically um, does help facilitate um, care a lot of the times because then you know what the child likes, what they prefer, what works, what might not. We've also delivered the heart education to more than 300 nurse nursing staff here at CHEO. We have developed an online recording of the heart education for staff so that they can view it on their off time if they aren't able to attend one of the presentations. And we are currently developing the heart education for our residents here at CHEO. Lorraine and I have also been busy planning our Champions Day for this fall, which will be September 28th, 2022. Um, and we 
or I have been dabbling a little bit more in the Powtoon world myself um, as I'm taking over the full lead from Lorraine this coming September. And so I've been um, recently making the 2022 um, highlights video for our BPSO work here at CHEO, which we will share with our staff in the coming weeks. So we'll, we included some references here um, that you can refer to in the presentation. Um, this concludes our presentation. Thank you so much for, for joining us. And if you have any questions, um, we would gladly take them now. We also wanted to note that we created this presentation using Canva. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so much, Lindsay and Lorraine, for such an engaging presentation. I really loved how you tailored the content in your videos to your audience. You knew exactly what your audience needed to know. And even information shared in the video itself, it was very concise, but also done in an effective way that they can pick up that information. So at this time, I would love to give our audience an opportunity to you know, ask questions. But I do see some comments in the chat, uh, people mentioning that it's very engaging, they like how simple it was. It's interactive and informative. I see some participants even mentioned they're very impressed with the work that you're doing within your organization in terms of creation of those videos. Uh, some mentioned also that they would totally attend your Champions Day <laughs> if they had the opportunity to do so. And also they just really think that you're really amazing in terms of your creativity uh, and the work that you have been doing. So I do have a few questions um, in the chat. I see here that someone is asking, can you share your care coordination note template or what you're using uh, with them? I will ask our Epic lead if we can do that. Cause I know sometimes when things are related to Epic, we um, are not allowed sharing things. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we'll definitely follow up on that. There's also a question about, did you publish the TikTok video? Like for example, the TLC video that you did, did you publish that or you just use TikTok to create the video? Yeah, no, we, it was, an app was used on um, one of the champion's phones to create the video. Unfortunately, Chio has very strict social media guidelines. And I do see another um, question in the chat that kind of is along the same lines of that. Um, so because of our strict social media guidelines and best practices for Chio, we are unable to share a lot of our videos outside of the walls of Chio because it, um, we're also because we're a bilingual hospital. And so everything would need to be be uh, translated and we need to go through many different avenues to get approved for social media use. So it, I guess short answer, we weren't able to post on, um, on the actual TikTok account. We don't have a TikTok account as far as I know for Chio, uh, but we were able to share internally with staff. Excellent. I believe there's a, all the, another question also. They were really interested in the platforms that you use. You mentioned Canva and also Powtoon. So um, folks are wondering if there's a cost associated with these social media platforms, if they can use that. Yeah, there is. So um, actually with Canva, you can do a lot with the free account. So I put together a lot of videos and presentations and I even record presentations using the free Canva account. But if you want some of the extra um, added interactive tools such as like the slide right now that keeps on repeating <laughs> and you know kind of flashing things or twinkling things to get people's attention then you do need to upgrade to a paid account um, but for both our Canva and our Powtoon account we were able to have our organization sign up for um, one of the more upgraded accounts and then we share the login information so I know for Powtoon we have like not the basic because we wanted the level above so we do have a a paid account, which allows us to remove the Powtoon watermark when we create our videos. Um, and I think we have something like 60 downloads a year and, and really we, we don't download 60 videos a year. Um, so that works for our organization. And I think it would just depend on how many people you have that would be using it or how many, how many times you, how often you think you would be using the platforms. Um, but you can also go, go to both websites and there's opportunity to just, you can input how many, how many staff you think would be using it and it'll give you an idea of what the cost would be. But like I said, Canva does have a free account that is, is very user-friendly um, and, and I, I do use that a lot. 
And I can just say for um, some of the costs, if people really want to know that um, you can have a, POW, a Powtoon account that goes anywhere from $20 to $100 um, per month. And then for the Canva uh, for the whole year, it's anywhere from the free account up to $200 for the year for the um, most expensive account. But like Lorraine was saying, we do um, share accounts here at our hospital. So um, like for our Powtoon, we use it at the educator group, but so does some of our communication team as well. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So um, I see a question here about the presentation, whether you'll be able to see this after it. Yes, this presentation is recorded and it will be posted on our NEO's website. So you'll see that come available in the upcoming days. I see also all the comments, excellent, very innovative and engaging. Uh, uh, thanks to you, um, especially during a time that's challenging as this, you know, with the pandemic, uh, with staffing and so forth. They're really pleased to see how you were able to do this and engage your champions uh, to enable uptake. And um, and I guess someone is wondering also, how did you determine this was the best way to engage your champions? Like, how did you come to this decision of let's create videos uh, that would engage mm -hmm. your staff? Yeah, so I think we really just um, had to find unique ways to reach staff without using posters and emails. So although these um, videos were shared via email because it was like a quick link and we would use you know bold or colored text say hey check out this video and then we would keep the text of the of the email very simple so that it, it, it um, was easy to just click the link and watch the video it was also shared um, like at meetings and at huddles and we we asked our champions to share them at the unit level as well so I don't think this is the only way that we engage champions. We use multiple different ways, like going in person to huddles, um, tuning into different meetings in person as much as we could, but a lot had to be done virtually. Um, it was just nice to kind of find something different and fun to share with staff with some music. And, and because it was, it was created by nursing colleagues, it just, it was nice to see it come from us, I think, as opposed to everything coming from the, the communications team where, where things often look not, not similar, but because they're, they're so strict on the templates they're able to use. Um, it was just nice to have different, different tools to use to share information with our staff. And I also see a question asking, um, did you have a way of tracking how many people would have accessed the video or looked at the video so that you would know um, whether they're engaging with the content? Yeah, so we do. That actually is in the hands of our communications team. So they can calculate every click. Now, I don't have those numbers, but um, I know that when we looked for examples of other videos that were being used by other hospitals, we compared um, how many clicks they got and what could we do differently so we could get more clicks on our videos. It sounds funny talking about clicks, but um, yes, that was part of our, uh, of our planning as we prepared these videos. I also saw another question about like templates and I'm not sure if um, like if that means for the presentation or not, but I, I know that we like having done this a few times now we had kind of jotted down a few tips on how to prepare a Powtoon video. So um, Lindsay, I know you wanted to speak to this. Yeah, so um, a lot of these uh, programs like Powtoon and Canva, depending on what you're creating, some of them already offer um, like really basic templates for what you want to create. Like Canva has tons for different posters, pamphlets, infographics, those kind of things. And Powtoon has similar templates for certain videos. Um, but really, we just say that if you are debating on using perhaps making a video as a method to reach staff or engaging them, um, that go ahead and watch some of the tutorials on Powtoon or Canva to see if it interests you. Um, identify your topic and your audience and look at their age demographic. We also learn from dealing with our communications team that it's very helpful to create a storyboard or a script for what you want to create your video about. And then just get really creative and have fun with what you're doing. Excellent. And how was the reception from your staff? How did they receive this information, uh, the videos that you shared? What was the feedback that you got? It was great. I think um, having having sent out emails prior to the declaration of the pandemic, there was, you know, we often say like we get crickets, you get the odd person that sends an email back to say, hey, I'm interested, or you go to huddles and you maybe have one person that says, takes the time to say, yeah, I'd like to, 
I'd like to learn more, but um, after sharing these videos in, in meetings or even, even via email or having, post, having them posted on our internal website, um, people often, you know, replied back or re reached out to us to say, hey, I saw the video, like I want to learn more or, um, or thanks for sharing that. It was so nice to have something fun and uplifting to watch, you know, so I think maybe it wouldn't have been as well received if we weren't in a pandemic, but it was definitely kind of something fun to share with staff and to help, um, you know, put a smile on some people's face or maybe not, maybe they were irritated, but I think in general, most people were happy to, were happy to watch them and, and became more curious as a result. I can also say too, for, um, from Lorraine and mine's experience that this whole video creation has trickled into other things at CHEO. So Lorraine and I have been previously very involved in Nurses Week as well. And now people this past year, we made a video for Nurses Week celebrating their accomplishments instead of just doing a regular PowerPoint like we would have done virtually. And so um, we're having demands from more people in the hospital and from frontline staff saying like, hey, we love the videos. Can we use it in other stuff and other means at the hospital? Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Lindsay and Lorraine. Um, you definitely put a smile on my face as I was looking at your videos, <laughs> uh, just listening and just see how you develop the content and ways you, in which you're engaging your staff. So really amazing presentation today. So as we prepare to wrap up this session for today, I would like to thank everyone for taking the time out to join us uh, as part of this monthly webinar that we host. Uh, for those of you who are participating in this webinar, you'll soon receive an evaluation link uh, for today's presentation. After you've done the evaluation, you will receive your certificate of attendance. In addition, please let us know if you have any suggested topics that you would like us to address or to talk about. And lastly, I would like to um, just share that this work uh, is funded by the government of Ontario. Once again, I just wanna thank everyone who have joined us today, who've been with us today. Thank you so much for being part of this presentation. And we hope you really enjoyed it and look forward to seeing you at the next information sharing webinar. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much.